ar ID H Inovācijas Centru Transporta Sakara institūtā. Mums ir iespējams arī skatīties translāciju Facebookā un YouTube kanālā. Šodien pirmās desmit minūtes es jums pastāstīšu, kas ID H vispār ir. Programmas turpinājumā, kā jau programmā bija norādīts, būs gan uzrunas no Transporta un Sakara institūta rektora, gan no izlītības un zinātnes ministrijas pārstāves, gan no saimas, gan no privāto investīciju asociācijas. Un tad būs septiņu komandu prezentācijas, bet viss pa visu pēc kādas. Tātad Idea Hub ir inovācija centrs, kurš līdzīgi kā citās valstīs, līdzīgi kā citās universitātēs, veids amatā trīs funkcijas. Pirmā ir inovācija projektu konkurs, angliski mēs viņu saucam par Call for Applications, kas ir arī tāda pamata lieta, un kas šodien ir galvenā lieta ar inovāciju komandu prezentācijām. Otrā lieta ir, ka studenti, kas iesaistīšies ar diekāpu konkursā, vienlaikus aktīvi mācās, darbojās laboratorijās un izmanto ar diekāpu citas iespējas un resursus. Un trešā ir, ka mēs piedāvājam bezmaksas apmācības gan tiem, kas piedalās kā komandas konkursos, gan jebkurai jebkuram cilvēkam jebkuram studentam, kam ir vēlme padziļināt savas zināšanas tieši uzņēmēja darbībā, start-up, vidē, inovāciju vadībā. Tātad ļoti modernas gan projektu vadības prasmes, gan dizaina domāšana no pasniedzējiem no visas pasaules. Tātad Finansiālā puse, te ir daudz arī jaunie studenti, kam varētu interesēt, tad būtu pieteikties bez tā, ka šī ir vienkārši forša aktivitāte, ko mēs piedāvājam. Arī finansiāli viņi piedāvā, nu, faktiski trīs veidu atbalstus. Pirmais ir jūs katras komandas dalībnieks var saņemt 200 eiro stipendiju šo sešu mēnešu laikā, kamēr tiek īstenotas investīciju projekts, inovāciju projekts. Otrā lieta ir komandas saņem samērā ievērojumu finansējumu ieviešot inovāciju idejas dažādi izmaksas sekšanai. Lielajiem projektiem ir vairāk kā 11 tūkstoši eiro, mazajiem projektiem ir 2500 eiro. Šodien uzstāsies no septiņām komandām divi būs lieli, pieci būs mazi. Tātad šodien šīs, kāds no šīm septiņām komandām saņems galveno balvu 5 tūkstoši eiro, otru balvu 2 tūkstoši eiro un tūkstotu eiro saņems trešā vieta. Nākošajā gadā tas atkārtosies. Tātad šobrīd ir atvērts pieteikšanās no šīs kols, kā mēs saucam, uz trešo konkursa kārtu. Līdz 10. jau 2012. Ir jāiesniec pieteikums. Par pieteikumu formālu pusi es pastāstīšu pēc prezentācijām. Šodien uzstāsies komandas no pirmā uzsaukuma un otrā uzsaukuma. Pirmā uzsaukuma komandas savu sešu mēnešu projektu izstrādes cikli ir noslēguši. Otrā uzsaukuma komandas vēl ir tikai pusē. Līdz ar to tā gatavības stadija atšķirās. Kas var būt pieteicēji ID Hub? Tie var būt studenti no jebkuras Latvijas augstskolas, atsevišķos gadījumos ar jānovālstu augstskolas, piemēram, Asmus programma apmaiņas gadījumā. Tie var būt arī vidusskolnieki. Piemēram, šodien mums būs arī vidusskolnieki, gan no Valmieras, gan no Daugavpils. Arī var būt koledžu, profesionālu izlītības iestāžu audzēkni. Nu, lūk, idejas, jūs domājat, vai jānāk ar savu ideju, vai kaut kāda tiek ideja iedota. Divas opcijas. Viena, ka ir jums sava ideja, un otrs, ja jums nav sava ideja, tad mums ir ideja banka, kurā industrijas pārstāvi uzņēmēji 
ir norādījuši, kas ir viņu aktuālās problēmas, ko viņi vēlētos, lai tie kā studenti strādā. Un ID Hub mājaslapā šī inovāta idejuma banka ir pieejama. No šodien septiņām komandām viena komanda izmantos ideju bankas piedāmāto ideju. Tātad mūsu, kā transporta sakara institūtam, paģērumi ir trīs vairāk tādas tehniskas tēmas, uz ko koncentrējās šis inovācijas centrs ID Hub. Tātad tā ir ICT, jeb informācijas un telekomunikācija tehnoloģijas, otra ir digitālā sabiedrība un transformācija, kas patiesībā ir ārkārtīgi plaša joma, un trešā ir vietā loģistika un transports, viss, kas iet uz digitalizāciju, modernizāciju. Tā, tātad šīs ir septiņas komandas, kas šodien uzstāsies. Es ļoti aicinu veltīt visu savu labo pozitīvu enerģiju un aplausus, jo komandas ir iespējams uztraukušās šī ir viņa tāda pirmā publiskā prezentācija un arī izbaudot. Katrai komandai būs dodas apmēram 7 minūtes laika prezentācijai. Pēc tam, ja ir vēlme, var būt laiks vienam diviem jautājumiem. Un tā mēs arī sāksim komandu nāks pēc komandas. Īsts pičs nāk nākamā komanda. Un pēc šīm prezentācijām es izstāstīšu, kā pieteikties nākamajiem uzsaukumam, ja jūs vēlaties būt šo komandu vietā nākamajā uzsaukumā. Un tagad es dodu vārdu transportu un sakaru institūtā rektoram Jurim Hanavam. Labdien! Cienījumie viesi, industrijas pārstāvi, izglītības zinātnes ministrijas pārstāvi, žūrijas locekli, jo mums, kā jau Jānis teica, mums ir konkurss, un būs arī konkurss, un būs vēlāk arī godaugods vietas un balvas, tādēļ mums ir arī žūrija, kas piedalās daļēji šodien, lai novērtētu klātienē jau šo te kādreiz atlasīto projektu rezultātus. Cienījumies studenti, dalībnieki, kas jau no bagājušā gada strādā un kas šodien prezentēs savus darba rezultātus. Un, protams, jaunie studenti, kas tikai vēl domā un gatavojās par to, ka pieteikt savu komandu, pieteikt savu ideju, lai varētu tātad izmantot visu šīs grantu iespējas un priekšrocības, par kurām bija runa, lai varētu realizēt savus idejas, bet reizē arī nopelnīt kādu naudiņu un tādā veidā padarīt savu dzīvi un studijas transportu sakaru institūtā interesantākas un arī lietarīgākas. Es gribētu teikt, ka šodien ir vienkārši unikāla diena mūsu augstskola dzīve, tāpēc, ka mēs šādu veidu pasākumu organizējam pirmo reizi. Pirmkārt, mēs esam ļoti, ļoti pateicīgi par to, ka vispār šāda programma ir tikus apstiprināta, par to, ka mums bija iespēja uz viņu pretendēt, par to, ka mēs esam saņēmuši šo grāntu un par to, ka mēs varam iesaistīt mūsu studentus, un godīgi sakot arī ne tikai mūsu studentus, šīs programmas realizācijā un tātad stimulēt veidot savas inovatīvās idejas, realizēt viņas dzīvē, jo otra unikalitāte priekš mūsu augstskolas ir tā, ka nākamais solis un mēs par to jau sāksim, jau patiesībā mēs par to jau domājam un runājam un gatavojamies, bet pavisam nopietni sāksim gatavoties pēc šodienas un pēc šīm septiņā prezentācijām. Tas ir jau šo te sagatavoto projektu, šo prototipu komercializāciju, vai nu veidojot jaunu startup uzņēmumus vai kaut kādā citādā veidā, vai palīdzot mūsu studentiem atrast sadarbības partneris no industrijas, tādēļ mēs esam aicinājuši arī šodien industrijas pārstāvis, 
kuri, kuri interesētu es varu būt par šiem projektiem un uz tādiem vai citādiem noteikumiem būtu gatavi tā tad viņus ņemt un, un realizēt praktiski dzīvē. Tātad, kā es teicu, tas ir jauns un ārkārtīgi svarīgs un ārkārtīgi nozīmīgs jauns posms mūsu augstskolas dzīvē. Mēs labi apzināmies, ka mūsu dienās vairs tāda izglītība pati par sevi neitrāla tīra, bez biznesa noz, iesaistes, bez jau orientēšanās uz konkrētiem rezultātiem. Nav svarīgi, tas varbūt nav biznes, bet tie varbūt arī pētniecīgi, pētnieciski projektu, pētnieciski rezultāti. Bet visam studiju procesam viņam ir jābūt vērstam nevis tikai uz zināšanu apgūvu, bet uz konkrētu iemaņu, kompetenču apgūvu un mācīšanos spēc šīs iemaņas un kompetences realizēt dzīvē. Tādēļ šis projekts, šī programma ir tik ļoti nozīmīga mums. Mēs arī mācamies, mēs kā augstskola, augstskolas administrācija mācamies, kā to realizēt, un ja nākotnē vēl būs līdzīgas programmas, kurās mēs varēsim piedalīties, es domāju, ka mēs noteikti viņās arī pieteiksimies un noteikti centīsimies startēt un saņemt grāmas sud dot tos mūsu studentiem praktiskai realizācijai un tas, tas zināšanas iemaņas, ko mēs kā administrācija esam pa gadu iegūši, tās ir arī unikāls priekš mums, ļoti nodarīgas, kuras noteikti mēs nākotnē varēsim izmantot dzīvē, gan veidojot projektu pieteikumus, gan viņus arī realizēt. Tādēļ es novēlu šodienas jau prezentētājiem novēlu šīm septiņām komandām, kuras, kā mēs runājam, jau no pagājušā gada ir darbojušās un jau sagatavojuši jau taustāmus reāls savu darbu rezultātus novēlu panākumus gan šodien, lai viss izdodās ar prezentācijām, lai nebeidzas elektrība, lai netrīc rokas, lai nekas nenotrīt, nenotrīt no galda zemē. No vēl veiksmi pēc tam saņemot žūrijas vērtējumu un saņemot balvas par savu darbu un, protams, vēl jau vairāk no vēl veiksmi tālākajā šo te projektu, šo te ideju realizācijā. Un mums jaunajiem studentiem, kuri šeit ir ieradušies, lai pasatītos, kas ir ideja H projekts, ko viņš piedāvā, kas ir jādara, kādi ir nosacījumi, kādas ir prasības un iespējas, es no vēl, protams, ietresēties noformulēt savas idejas, pieteikt viņas nākamajā uzsaukumā, kā Jānis teica, kurš būs jau drīz jau oktobrī, un tātad turpināt jau to darbu, ko vecāko, kurš studenti ir iesākuši pagājušajā gadā un šī gada pirmajā pusē. Visiem veiksmi, panākums un lai mums viss izdodas. Paldies, Kārma kungam, nākamais uh, uh, būs uh, nelielās izmaiņas programmā, bet tas tarams, neko daudz nemainīs, bet nākamais ir mūsu saimas pārstāvis Reinis Znotiņš, un Reinis Znotiņš nav uh, kā regulārs, ja kurš saimas pārstāvis, bet kā viens no redzamākajiem saimas pārstāviem, kas darbojās tieši ar inovāciju jautājumiem, un pats arī bijis, varbūt, ka vēl ir starta vidē, nezinu, bet dod vārdu Reinikas notiņam. Paldies! Sveiki visiem! Tā kā šis ir starta pasākums, ir jaunsģēma pasākums, tad iesāksim arī druska aktīvāk. Ja jūs dzirdat mani, plaukšiniet rokas vienreiz. Ja jūs plausties mani, plaukšiniet rokas divreiz. Ja jūs pavisam uzmanīgi spējiet plausīties, plaukšanat rokas trīsreiz. Paldies! Es esmu atdzīvinājis, jūs esmu redzu smaidus, sejā tas nozīmē, ka mēs varam sākt. Jā, es šobrīd esmu saimnes deputāts, bet, kā jau Jānis minēja, man iepriekšējā dzīves pieredze un profesionālā pieredze ir jauna uzņēmos, jau startupos. Un es gribu varbūt padalīties ar tādu mazu stāstu no tā, kā es atceros jaunu uzņēmumu startupu jomu, kā tā ir attīstījusies Latvijā un kāpēc jūs varbūt daļa no jums ir šeit un kāpēc tas vispār ir svarīgi. Tad pirmām kārtām, tā kā es sāku iesaistīties startupu jomā, es piemēram jūsu vecumā un vairs tāds sākums, pats 19 gadi apmēram, 
un es sāku iet uz Tekhab mīta piem un tā tālāk, un tajā laikā Tekhab, kas ir tāda nu, koptālpa strādāšanas, bija atradās doma laukumā, un viņi bija apmēram pieci istabu lielu, kur bija trīs startup komandas, nu, varbūt vēl bija kāda daža startup, kur bija jau attīstījušies, piesaistījuši kaut kādas investīcijas. Katrā ziņā vārds startups jeb jaunu uzņēmums bija tādā, nu, lielākajā daļā publikai nezināms. Viņš nebija zināms ne biznesa aprindās tā pilnībā, jā, vai kāds viņu nopietni novērtē. Viņš nebija zināms, nerunājot arī politiskās aprindas, ka tas būtu kaut kas dienas kārtībā. Un ir pagājuši tikai desmit gadi, un es pateikšu jums, kas ir mainījies šajā laikā. Mainījies ir ļoti daudz. Desmit gadu laikā mums ir tāda uzņēma kā Printful, kas astoņus gadus principā tikai eksistē, un no nulles ienākumiem, no nulles tikai no idejas, astoņu gadu laikā ir izauguši līdz miljārdu dolāru vērtam uzņēmumam. No Latvijas, dibinoties Latvijā. Mums ir uzņēmumi, kas ir piesaistījuši simtiem miljonu investīcijās. Un pagājušā gada, ja jūs paskatīsieties Latvijas investīciju un attīstības aģentūras, teiksim, bilancē, jeb kā viņi kautulē piesaistītās Latvijas valstī investīcijas, tad arī puse no tām būs ienākuši tieši jaunuzņēmos jeb startupos. Un arī politiskajā dienas kārtībā jaunuzņēmumi jeb startupi ir nu jau tāds pamata vārds, ko lieto un, un vairāk vai mazāk zin un ar pozitīvi, pozitīvajām emocijām uztver visi saimas deputāti. Un tā, tā ir liela atšķirība, kas ir notikusi, un tas viss ir noticis tikai desmit gadu laikā. Bet tas viss tāds teorētisks, ko es tagad stāstu. Jums ir droši vien interesē, kas jums no tā, kāda jums no tā ieguma, vai ne? Un tie ieguma ir ļoti daudz. Tie ieguma ir, jūs varat dibināt savus uzņēmumus, un es uzskatu, ka tas ir viens no labākajiem veidiem un ātrākajiem veidiem, kā jūs varat sasniegt nopietnu turību. Tā ir arī kultūra, startup un vai jau jaunu uzņēmumi ir arī kultūra, kurā jūs dalaties, jūs dodat atpakaļ sabiedrībai, caur to, ka, piemēram, jūs dodat akciju opcijas, jeb daļas kompānijā plašākam cilvēku lokam, nevis tikai vienam vai diviem dibinātājiem, bet, piemēram, mums ir tāds uzņēmums Printify, kurš ir izdalījis mazas daļiņas kompānijas visiem saviem darbiniekiem. Ja šajos jaunu uzņēmumos iesaistītajiem palīdz būtiski nopelnīt, ja kompānija ir veiksmīga. Un šajā ziņā mēs neesam arī, teiksim, sēdējuši un gaidījuši arī no saimas perspektīvas, mēs esam izstrādājuši, ka šobrīd ir novērtēts par labāko jaunu uzņēmumu regulējumu pasaulē. Ir viens startup likums, kas palīdz dažādiem, dažādiem gan nodokļu atvieglojumiem, gan tā tālāk, gan arī akciju opciju likums, ko mēs tieši pieņēmām šajā saimā, un kas tieši palīdz vislabākajā, vienkāršākajā un mazāk birokrātiskajā veidā, izdalīt tātad lašākam dalībnieku skaitam kompānijas akcijas, mazas daļiņas, tātad jums ir lielāka motivācija strādāt, un ja kompānija izdodās, tad izdodās nevis tikai vienam vai diviem īpašniekiem, bet izdodās daudz plašākai cilvēku daļai, kur tad nopelna pārdodot šīs akcijas. Ar jūs iespēju agrīnā vecumā izdarīt kaut ko lielu, mainīt pasauli un padarīt vīdi sev apkārt labāk. Un tie jaunu uzņēmumu un dibinātāji, kas Latvijā ir, un arī citur, tāpēc es teicu, ka daļa no kultūras, viņi savukārt to naudu, ko viņi nopelnījuši, viņi ieguldu atpakaļ. Viņi ieguldu atpakaļ, un šie citi veiksmīgi uzņēmē jau paši ir ieguldījuši desmit dažādos citos startupos. Un tā ir liela pārmaiņa arī domāšanas ziņā, biznesa domāšanas ziņā, kā mēs skatāmies to lietām, uz šīm lietām. Un šī ir viena no tām lietām, tāpēc jums būtu jābūt ļoti priecīgiem un privileģētiem, ka jums ir iespēja tik agrā vecumā iesaistīties šajās lietās. Tāpēc gribu uzteikt Jāni un, un visu komandu šeit ar to, ka šādi iespēja jums tiek piedāvāt, lūdzu izmantojiet to stāstiet saviem draugiem, kolēģiem, klasesbiedriem, pašādām iespējām un nebaidieties sliktākajā gadījumā jūs iemācīsieties ļoti daudz. Paldies un vēl veiks mums visiem! Eiropas Savienības struktūru fondiem plānots īstenu šādu programmu arī nākamā plānošanas periodā. Novēlu jaunajiem izgudrotājiem veiksmīgi, veiksmīgi soļot pat pazināšanu un inovācijas ceļu, kā arī atrodot jaunus 
pielietojumu savām zināšanām. Paldies jums veiksmīgi! Es paldies, ir klimtības. Es paldies, ir klimtības zināts ministrijas pārstāvi. Sāksim prezentācijas lūkšu skatu uz Rudolfu Kresi. Rudolfs Kresi ir ārkārtīgi nozīmīgs cilvēks startupiem, iespējams, ka jums kādreiz. Viņš praktiski palīdz startupiem aiziet uz nākamo ciklu attīstības un no idejas, no prezentācijas šeit. Rudolfs man tā liekas, ka viņš sēž pie gauda vai onlainā un konsultē to komandu, kā viņiem augt straujām. Bet Rudolfam ir arī formāli daudz svarīgi amati, kā piemēram privāto investīciju asociācijas valdes loceklis ZGI Kapitalu projekta vadītājs. Pastāstīs Rudolf pats sīkāk, bet lūdzu aplausu Rudolfam ļoti nozīmīgs pārtāvis un pēc formālās daļas visi tiek aicināti uz kādu dzērienu vai apēc kādu augli un tur iesakam konsultēties gan ar Rudolfu, gan ar citiem uzņēmu pārstāvi. Jāni, paldies par silto ievadu. Jā, esmu Rūdavs, investīcija fonda ZGI kapitāla investīcija direktors un privātā un risk kapitāla asociācijas valdes loceklis. Industrijā esmu gandrīz desmit gadus. Būtībā tas, ko es daru katru dienu, es tiekos ar uzņēmējiem un meklēju iespējas, kur ieguldīt. Šodien es paskaitīju, varētu būt, ka par šiem gadiem kaut kādas trīs tūkstoši, apmēram, biznesa plāni ir izskatīti ļoti, ļoti, ļoti daudz, kas ir redzēts. Un viena lieta, es arī pats esmu bijis studiju laikos biznesa inkubatorā, arī pats attīstījis savas idejas. Tas, ko es vienkārši uzreiz iesaku, domājiet plaši, jo laiks iet ļoti ātri. Un, nu, tieksim, salīdzinājumam pie maniem atnāk uzņēmējs, kurš grib attaisīt vienu kafēnīcu, nevis attaisīt Starbucks un attaisīt kafēnīcas tur visā pasaulē, visā Eiropā. Es teiktu, tā ir viena niansa, kas ļoti Latvijā pietrūkst. Es teiktu tā, domājiet plaši, domājiet globāli, domājiet par eksportu no dienas nolē. Tā ir pirmā lieta noteikti, ko darīt. Tad otrais, par šiem gadiem ļoti jauki ir attīstījusies visi ekosistēmi. Ja kādreiz cilvēki domā, ka biznesa eņģeles kaut kur lidinās gaisā, Tad šodien tā satīk biznesa eņģela, tā ir reāla iespēja katru dienu, katru mēnesi, ir Latbans, ir Idea Hubs, ir biznesa inkubātori, būtībā startups var piesaistīt investīcijas sākot no akcelerācijas fonda vēlāk sēklā un vēlāk izaugsmē, tad jau varētu satikt arī mani, jo tipiski mēs investējam starp 2 un 5 miljoniem, mums visticamākais tur jau ir tirgus, klienti un apgrozījums. Tieksim tā, bet un noteikti no manīm ieteikums ir nebaidīties un iet runāt pie investoriem, iet runāt pie fondiem, jo katrs iedos mazu padomiņu un beigās būs iespēja uzsaisīt kaut ko tiešām lielu, kaut ko tiešām jauku. Jā, un tad vēl viena niance, tā kā es pārstāvu arī asociāciju, tad nesen risk kapitāls Latvijā ir pārstāvs par iespēju kapitālu, jo tās ir iespējas, ko pavēr sadarbība ar risk kapitālu fondiem. Un trešā lieta, ko es gribēju pieminēt, ir izmantot fondu un izaugsmas fondu un iespēju kapitāla fondu investīcijas, jo piesaistot fondu, jūs saņemat partneri, kurš nāk ne tikai kā vienkārši investors, ne tikai nauda, bet kas nāk kā partneris, kurš palīdzēs jums attīstīties, iet tālāk iet tālāk tirgos, palīdzēs ar kontaktiem, palīdzēs ar nākamā līmeņa finansējuma piesaisti un tā. Jā, paldies, ka esat šeit, paldies, ka esat uzņēmēji, turpiniet un viss notiks. Paldies! Now, slowly, we're going to switch to English, because all the presentations today will be in English. We started in Latvian, but as who said, Rudolf or Reins said, think big. In order to think big, you have to uh, present your ideas also to the wider audience, the global audience. Therefore, we, we, we did training with teams to present in English. Uh, uh, 
there's a list, very randomly made, but uh, seven teams will pitch one by one. We will start with Avdok team. Uh, so guys, where are you are there? Please be ready. Maybe you can already slowly come and put your presentation on. Also, this team uh, had very close cooperation with industry partners. Um, company created application that makes life easier for product forwarding companies. Company will uh, team will explain more details uh, their business model and how they solve specific problems. And now, if the team is ready, it seems so. Uh, the floor is yours, and approximately seven minutes. And afterwards, uh, anyone uh, are welcome to ask one or two questions, so that we approximately uh, uh, can spend ten minutes for each team. Thank you, thank you Janis, for your introduction, and generally for this opportunity to share our project. Close I will start. Okay. Automation, digitalization, and standardization are three strong words that create trends in modern shipping. During my studies in DC, I always hear from lecturers why these principles are important. That ports should be automated, that businesses should be digitalized, and information and policy should be standardized. However, as it is always in life, applying these principles to real world comes with a variety of challenges. Henry Ford once said that there is no big problems, there are just a lot of small ones. And digitalization is no exception, especially uh, when it comes to the industry that is arguably one of the most complicated there is. Our project, Abdo, uh, is only an attempt, an attempt to start solving small problems in logistics and provide path for big and radical changes. And our journey started with photos and flexi tanks. Updoc initiative intends to provide better image information collection, shorting and reporting tool to companies involved in a flexi tank transportation. Flexi tank is essentially a bag that is installed in a 20 foot dry container and flexi tanks are used for non hazardous liquid transportation uh, globally. Recently, flexi tanks became extremely successful because they simply provide more cheaper and more flexible uh, liquid bulk transportation means to shippers. One problem with flexi tanks lies in the fact that their installation process is fairly complex and therefore should be carefully documented. Container damage cases are not relevant event in modern shipping because of which every uh, stakeholder, for example, a freight forwarder itself, insurance company, uh, freight tank manufacturer, all are interested in keeping extensive photographic archives of each and every, every flexi tank installed to be easily accessed at any time in case of container damage in transit. In fact, up to 14 pictures must be taken for each flex tank installed to ensure that uh, all the work was done properly. Now you might ask, okay, forwarders take a lot of pictures uh, every day, but what tool do they use to collect and store this vast amount of images? And the answer is quite surprising because vast majority of companies in this industry use simple messengers such as WhatsApp or Telegram to collect and store image information. This is wrong in many ways, and we want to, ch to change how companies in this industry should organize their photo documentation. Updoc Flexi application aims uh, to streamline a flexi tank installation process as well as automate uh, photo documentation, uh, how companies work with photo documentation. We are working, working really closely with uh, industry partners. We have conducted several meetings with well-respected flexitant operator in Baltics, uh, Sierra Shipping. Uh, 
to ensure that our solution contains all the necessary functionality for a successful FlexiBank installation uh, process. Uh, now we are sure that our solution will clearly benefit companies across the industry, uh, decreasing cost, uh, minima uh, saving company time and resources, as well as minimizing human mistakes and misunderstandings. Now briefly about uh, the realization process. Updoc is a uh, system that consists of three independent components. Firstly, it's Java-based Android application uh, for Android mobile platform, and it's Firebase database and cloud storage, as well as React.js-based uh, website that stores historical documentation information. Currently, we're almost done with our OCR engine its efficiency is around 80-90% and our mobile application is done by around 60%. During the break, if you are interested, we may show you a demonstration of our application with OCR in the real, in the real world task. So, you are welcome. Now let's go back to our target market. FlexiTank market was valued at uh, $717.4 million in 2020 and is expected to expand at impressive CAGR of 21% from 2020 to 2021. We believe that during this period of time, there will be a lot of companies emerging on this fast-growing market that will desperately need such solution as ours. Also keep in mind that our project is not just a software project, it is a student project too. Our team consists of two young and very ambitious individuals from different Latvian institutions. Each of us is highly motivated and skilled in unique areas. Uh, by supporting our project and Idea Hub in general, you send a clear message that yes, it is possible to drive innovation and contribute to global uh, trends of digitalization while being a student. That lectures should not only be about lectures, uh, about uh, some works and tests. Also, our team aims to deliver ready product at impressive time frames. Updog Flexi application is expected to be beta tested in real world conditions uh, in November, December 2022. Uh, before our uh, final presentation in late November, software requirement specification document will be developed and published, making our first product ready for a commercial use. And we will not, not stop there. We will continue, of course, developing our products in 2023. App, uh, Updoc Flexi will receive Apple platform support in uh, May 2023, and simultaneously developing activities will start on another Updoc product that uh, will be called Updoc Surrey. And this product will uh, aim improving operation of surveyor companies. As it is always in uh, IT projects and startups, investments are essential to achieve growth. We actually believe that our success depends on how quickly we act from the moment we start speaking publicly about what we are doing. We need funds to continue developing Adobe Flexi, adding new features and expanding application functionality. As well, we, we, need, we need funds to uh, present our product on various exhibitions here in Latvia and abroad. To conclude, I will say again these three magic words, digitalization, automation, and standardization. We, as a team, want not only to hear on lectures why these principles are important, but actually to solve real-world problems and drive innovation forward. And uh, we will start with photos and flexidance. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes, we can, work. We, we can actually do a sure. live, live demonstration here on this slide. So it will okay. make this happen. So reality check, whether it's just presentation or there is some, some actual products made. Yes.
Meanwhile, team is preparing for final demonstration. Next team can... May I ask a question? Yes, well, that, yes uh, of course. I have a question. You said that... Uh, you said that uh, your target auditory is shipping companies, right? Uh, more specifically, our target audience is uh, companies, uh, freight forwarding companies, who are involved in flexi-time transportation. Right. I would like to suggest, uh, first of all, uh, maybe you should contact the insurance companies. Because uh, if this flexi tank is installed wrong, then it means that the insurance company has to cover all the costs if the cargo is lost. So it might be they could be more interested to invest in the tool. Uh, yes. Uh, generally, in this industry, this happens all the time. So we are not uh, encouraging freight forwarders to start taking pictures. It happens uh, with every company. So, we just will make easier for freight forwarders to collect and store these images. They will do it 100% uh, even without our application. It will be just much harder to do. Yes? So, uh, yes, insurance companies are interested in having such information, but in any ways we just make e uh, life easier for freight forwarders, not insurance. Because insurance company doesn't care how this information is stored and how it was collected. They just want to have it. Our aim is to simplify the documentation process and make possible to create uh, at the end stage, uh, at the end stage uh, comfortable and easy to make uh, documentation for the format. And uh, our application... Microphone, please. Microphone, speak into the mic. Okay, uh, we will start with our live demonstration. A freight forwarder now scans a container number. The system recognizes uh, the number, and now you can create a container profile. <coughs> we have a really slow internet here, <laughs> but it should be much quicker. Yes? I think this is a pro uh, internet issue, so I maybe... I don't know about that, but uh, what the application does later. Okay, if you are interested to see how our application works, just uh, in the break you can uh, come to us and we will show uh, in our home. Yes, so maybe it, I think it is a connection issue with uh, uh, PC and mobile application. It is. Uh, in a break when we will have a networking session, we will make sure that the phone, internet, Works better and demonstration oh, can be done. Now it works, yes. And now we can add. add Sorry, features. it was internet issue. And now you may see uh, some steps. By the front door has been already taken. It's right side, left side. Currently we have only eight steps, but uh, in future, when contact, uh, after contact with company, we will add some steps if they wish so. And we can make couple of photos on the right side alright guys that's it yeah, I think we are uh, out of uh, time for your presentation so you but see, uh, at the end all the photos made and finished the I have seen it, and I've seen it that it works perfectly. It's just uh, the issue of internet. It's not uh, uh, the fault of these guys. They actually have done uh, great work, and uh, I would like to hear applause at this moment. And also, let's uh, stage.
while, Nikita, maybe you can come back for a short while. The second team is uh, uh, uploading presentation. Uh, this team might do a little photo. presentation and we will show you our uh, interim progress of the project so first opportunity we have an opportunity to solve important social problems using innovative approaches and technologies about the problem the problem is that many visually impaired people lack important visual experience and also 80% of them are coming from low-income households. The way to approach the problem is to develop a device that will allow people to see objects from a distance. Such a device needs to be cheap and easy to use. And now about the market. The market is special because it is a social problem and uh, we're trying to make product available and profitable. Market size is about 285 million of visually impaired people in the world and uh, half of them are from Asia. And our competitors. Uh, first one, Argus 2. It can uh, restore vision but uh, very high cost. Second one, BrainPort, device that allows blind people to see with their tongue. Uh, it improves experience, but also have a high price. And next one, Torchit, assistive device that is attached to the white cane. Uh, most uh, affordable, but provides limited experience. And uh, our device, Valkyrian, uh, provides experience uh, similar to Brainport, but at lower price. And now meet our solution. Our solution should provide following features for the user. Mobility. Device is fully autonomous and has a light and small form factor. Voice assistance. We plan to add audio feedback to warn user about the state of the device, battery level, and so on. Tactile display. Tactile display will project information onto the hand and also it left fingertips open so you can still sense objects with your, directly with your hand. Our product consists of small and cheap time-of-flight multi-zone ranging sensor that transfers data about the space in front of the hand to the microcontroller, then the microcontroller proceeds this data and sends instruction in signals to the tactile display, which is made uh, from a grid of small coin motors that can vibrate on different frequencies representing the distance to the object. And uh, all this is powered by a battery that can last uh, for all the day. And now about our team. Our team lead, Manu, our engineer and designer, Vasily. Uh, me, Alexandra, I'm market and business research manager. And our mentor, Vladimir Petrov. So, the business model. It's not our main focus right now, but here is our vision how we are going to generate profit from our product. Firstly, firstly, we are planning to sell it directly to customers through services like Amazon or AliExpress, and for that we will launch information campaign. 
And also, we have uh, plans to sell it to, to businesses like to the hospitals or recreation centers. So, what are our future goals? Firstly, we will finish our current project by developing a demonstrator based on this core technology. We will test it on uh, real people and uh, receive feedback. After that, uh, we have plans to develop a complete product with the help of Idea Hub and investments. And when the technology is mastered, we can either launch a production or sell it. So, we also thought about how to expand the number of potential clients, and the answer is to use our device in alternative areas. For example, uh, since our device can provide uh, information about the objects, we can use it in their industry. For example, uh, from representatives of Meta, we know that uh, haptics is an uh, area that is now actively developed. So, thank you for your attention. Imagine these guys just presented their idea to Meta. Anyone knows who is Meta? Facebook. It's Facebook uh, owner and basically the main IT platform company globally. So you just, instead of uh, just studying, you also do your project and you can present it to uh, global companies and potentially get uh, uh, further funding or at least ideas, but that's a uh, unique experience. Uh, let's make a short, not short, but just a photo of these guys. And meanwhile, railway maintenance platform or Sohoi IE from artificial intelligence, I believe, will do the presentation, but you will explain more, all right? Which microphone would you like to use? This one. So, hey guys, uh, my name is Akita. Uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, is there any questions to previous team? Perfect. That's what I saw. <laughs> so, right now I'm going to start. So, hello guys, my name is Akita. And I'm here to present this Hone AI. So the company we'll be building throughout the basically already a year. And uh, we are actually a deep tech startup that was founded in Berlin by me and my friends. And our goal is to create a technology that with the help of automation, basically the software and robotic, the IT, helps to solve challenges in the modern railway. So this is the vision for our future robot. The name is Alea One. And so our technological partners include uh, uh, LIA, Technology Business Centers, Cloudwiser, they support our cloud solutions and EAT manufacturing because our stakeholder is uh, EAT, so they owe a percentage in our company. So the problem that car and railway industry faces is that approximately 75% of all the costs incurred by the railway are maintenance. So basically we build something and the rest of the life you're just trying to maintain the whole infrastructure. Just imagine the, vast, the vastness of the kilometers in railway, even in Latvia. So the railway that takes from Riga to Urimo, it has to be maintained every day, every time and every hour in order to ensure the safety of operations. And the average number in Europe that's spent on the railway is $25 billion. So this is actually a huge number and we as a team have a potential to cut it. Speaking about the human resources, we need a lot of people. Uh, we need a lot of people maintaining the railway. So uh, we need at least four people that check single kilometer of the railway. So this is also a huge overhead for every company. And the cost of repairing one kilometer is 181,000 euros. So we have, before starting to do anything, we try to analyze the cases that were published in the different scientific journals and we have been contacting with the companies. So we have analyzed 200 cases of inadequate inspection, both a German railway, so namely the Deutsche Bahn, and the Spanish railway. And we came up with several solutions that will improve the state of the railway tracks. So the portfolio includes the robot, I already mentioned, and the, and, and the solution, which is called IRED. 
So the platform, I will be more telling about it because it was developed uh, within the within the frames of the Idea Hub. So what is it? So this is a so this is a software as a service solution, basically a platform that allows to incorporate all the information from the railway maintenance on one website, and it's available online. So it imp it improves the workflow because we can manage everything online. We can monitor our workers. We see where they are, what they did, so how much they inspected. And the platform allows to provide the info in detailed information at a glance. So right now, to my amazement, in Latvia we do everything in paper. So basically humans walk along down the railway, they take down the notes on the paper, they bring it back to the office and they type it into the computer. Come on, 21st century, people were talking about meta, you know, three minutes ago, and still in that web. Right, so we are able to track workers real time. So once they log into our application, we see where they are, we see what they do, so no more laziness anymore as in the railway. We do, we do everything, we know everything what they do. And we actually know how much they inspect it. So whether they have really been on the Sloka station, whether they'd really go to Zintri and inspect a single kilometer of the railway. And that is very important. We are also able to process issues at a glance. So once the data has been entered by the railway maintenance worker, we, we provide the collaborative tool. You may use Jira in IT and we have created the Jira for the railway. Because there you, you also have the backlog, you can add comments, you can see the photos, everything in one place. And that's what makes our solution unique. And also finally, we can check the quality of inspections. We filter by worker, we filter by the time, and we have all the data gathered in one place. So for, I don't know, for reporting. And also, like accountants like it, we're able to generate time reports for our worker. So let's have we have Yanis Berzinc, and we would like to see how many kilometers he walked yesterday. So we log into our platform, we just give the correct time frame and we have the reports downloaded as a CSV, so easy. And finally, uh, actually I'm proud of this because it allows us to create the graphs inside the application. So we can benchmark the existing workers, how they perform across each other, whether they have been doing their work good or bad, and everything we can see online. So the market is 25 billion by the year 2023. Our competitors include such prominent companies as Mermec, as a Fukuro and Placentova. And actually what makes us so special is that we provide the most modalities and the most of automation together with the robot I have shown you and the platform I'm telling you right now. So we actually launched already a solution I'll show in a sec. It will be coupled by the robot in December and we plan to start tests of the whole solution portfolio in January 2023 with German Railway. Yes, and here's our amazing team. So basically, we have four developers, we have fantastic mentor, Vladimir Petrovs, and the credibility. These are the companies we worked at, so you can really believe that we know the things, what we are building. And guys, so actually we are hiring back-end developer and the front-end developer, also machine learning engineer. So please make a photo of this and send us your CV if you would like to work with us. Because we really need talents in our company, and this is uh, actually a mess today to get like right people working. So that's also my telegram, so feel free to send me a note like Nikita, your presentation was shit, so you're always also welcome. So let's see the product. So this is the solution, this is our portfolio. So it already automatically determines the TCE, oh I see TCE bibliotheca. So we're right in the place. So it automatically has determined where we are. And uh, here is a railway track. So we have incorporated all the railway track across the whole globe in, on our map. So we use OpenStreetMap and we put a layer of railway. So let's see, uh, here we have different problem centers. So this has been entered by my colleague, uh, Michael, our developer. So he went specifically in Nilgusiems and he entered the problem. So we see them, on, we see this problem online. So just trying to explain how the solution works, right? And there, there come different problems. So once you click on the link, you have the problem open. This is not yet finished, so if you learn Epson, once we hire back in development, it will be done. Yeah, so, okay, I showed you the dashboard. Probably you would like to see the reporting tool, so I promised. So let's say we would like to generate the report, what our workers did in starting from March the 1st until the 16th of September. So we can choose any line, Riga Passagiri Askrautla, Riga Passagiri Yelgava. We can choose any station, Tornia Council, this is the closest one here, Zasulau Depa, and so on and we can use any, any workers, so actually there are four of us, the team, yeah? So no more workers are at the moment, and then we, and then we click print data. So our system sends a request to the database and it gets all the problems that have been entered by different workers seen on the screen. And then you can download the data, as I told you, so the CSV report, you have it open and easy. So everything, everything uh, comes at a glance. 
let's see also uh, what what our guys, my guys, have been doing. So we have here uh, the Zuhon admin, so our lead backend developer, and let's see uh, where he is. So actually, he is currently at the business office called Turiba, writing the code here, and we see that he has added some problems. This red line represents how he, he has been moving across the Riga. So once we have once we launch it with real workers, we will see what was their what was their pathway. Also, we have this Jira solution, as I told you. Every problem has four states in backlog to do in progress and done. Once we click it done, it disappears from the worker scorecard. See? So we can easily manage our workers. And finally, uh, the inspection screen, uh, which, which is right here. So we again select the time period. We would like to see inspections for our workers. Let's say the 1st of March till the 16th of September. And we see how many inspections have been added by the whole organization. And then, once you open it, you see what, what are, where the problems added in the specific inspection. So that's basically was in short about the Suhona AI. And as again, please send us your CV and we are ready to answer your questions. Thanks. There is at least one question from Godovs. Yep. Thanks, uh, great presentation. Uh, maybe you can explain more uh, how smart is this robot? It's just a visual inspection or there are some other sensors? So, so what are the prob problems the uh, robot detects and, and whether it detects all the pro problems, for example, Deutsche Bahn needs? Uh, okay, let me be specific here. So we were using uh, the resources of the Idea Hub to develop the platform, but the robot is developed with the LIA technology business centers. So, and speaking about the robot, right now we are trying to measure uh, quantums. Yeah, so this is the first measurement, and uh, later we will add also cameras to recognize it with the help of the computer vision if all the objects of, uh, of this uh, SLEA so yeah, railway tracks are present there. Yeah, so we'll also be using not only sensors, but also a computer vision at later stage. And this was a request actually by Deutsche Bahn. Mm -hmm. Did I answer your question? Okay. Thanks. This is a very impressive project. Maybe any other question? No, perfect. I will use this opportunity and uh, take a photo with Nikita, if Nikita don't mind. Of course not. <laughs> not yours. Meanwhile, Innovatic uh, team, please come on stage. curious about uh, automation and optimization of different um, processes, uh, not only in different factories, but in our everyday lives. We have received some idea from uh, Idea Hub Bangkok Ideas, and especially from TTS uh, company. Uh, they reported us that uh, there is some problem with uh, manufactured uh, details uh, in factories uh, that are that, uh, that need to be uh, measured, uh, unfortunately, manually by employees. And uh, we started to think about the possible solution of the problem of manual inspection of some details. Before we start about our project, let me introduce uh, myself and my team. Uh, I am a team software developer. Uh, my colleagues are two Nikitas, uh, Nikitos Trevenets, who is uh, team engineer and uh, our team lead Nikita Potanov, who is responsible for uh, general engineering and system architecture. Of course, uh, we received uh, a lot of help from uh, Vladimir Petrovs and, of course, our uh, supervisor Alexander Grabovskis. So, uh, what was the actual main problem? Uh, manufactured detail check is usually carried out manually. 
for example, if uh, some factory is uh, manufacturing some chair, it is necessary to manually check uh, this chair for some errors and problems, and it uh, costs about 10 to 15 percent of time for employee to manually check uh, such problems. Uh, there are some existent uh, solutions, but they're quite um, pricey and cost ineffective, uh, mainly due to nowadays uh, microchip crisis, uh, and these solutions cost uh, 10 times more than we expected to pay for our solution. Uh, of course, uh, if some company wants to uh, speed up the production workflow, if they want to sell more, uh, they need to or optimize the solution or pay more just to increase the sale volume, uh, which is quite uh, hard without any sort of automation because it is needed uh, to rent new buildings or uh, have more employees and so on. Um, as a solution, uh, we have thought about a complex that automatically evaluates the compliance of the parameters of some manufactured parts and structures with uh, specifications and quality standards uh, which are based on a non-contact method. As you can see from the first one, uh, demonstrated prototype, uh, we have um, made some prototype which uh, main technology is uh, used by leader camera uh, which uh, records all the dimensions of the detail and later on it uh, builds up a 3D model and compares it with existing scheme of some detail that is needed to be measured. Uh, in order to build up our project, uh, three main technologies should be used. First of all, we needed uh, some physical uh, project that uh, should be uh, used for our camera, which you can see a demonstrative uh, right there. Second one uh, is the main technology that we are uh, using is Intel uh, camera, uh, Intel LiDAR camera, which can uh, measure all the details uh, using um, technologies, uh, providing uh, point of cloud um, files which are used to build up a 3D model. And of course, in order to process all the visualization and uh, 3D modeling, we needed some uh, controller, which uh, we used uh, just an Xavier NX controller um, from NVIDIA, uh, because we just thought that uh, this is one of the most cost-effective um, things that we can use. So, how it really works. Uh, on the first picture, you can see how LiDAR camera sees uh, all the world uh, with depth sensor, which is the main technology that is being used uh, by cameras. Uh, for a bit, a little bit more information, uh, you can also see LiDAR RGB view, which uh, just shows that we were recording a placed cube on the table. And the third one uh, is a picture of um, only one frame uh, exported from the view of camera. It is a frame in uh, point of cloud uh, file, .pli file. Uh, so, in short, uh, when we start recording uh, all the video using LiDAR camera, uh, this camera um, takes all the raw data in uh, back file, uh, later converts it to a point of cloud. It is just a scheme of uh, some detail uh, in points. And later on, it builds some 3D model with all the dimensions, uh, detail width, and so on. And later on, of course, it will also uh, check for some errors according to the uh, existence scheme. Uh, as for advantages, we think that uh, our solution can automate all the process of uh, detail measurements uh, because it is not needed to use uh, manual instruments. Uh, and it is also faster than using uh, some manual work. Also, since only one sensor is being used in our solution, um, we think that our project uh, will be uh, much cost effective because uh, other solutions use much more uh, cameras and sensors 
and it uh, uses much more money, especially nowadays. Of course, uh, we thought about some scalability possibilities, uh, and we think that um, this uh, equipment isn't as big uh, to not be placed everywhere, so it can be placed almost everywhere in every factory. Uh, we are also thinking about uh, building uh, this uh, solution as stackable. Uh, I mean that uh, in future uh, our customers will be able to absolutely customize uh, the solution for all their needs by um, choosing every uh, dimension uh, sizes so they will just um, find the best uh, dimensions of the project uh, for their needs and they will be able to measure uh, both uh, little devices and uh, like uh, big details for ships and aircraft. As for clients, uh, we think that uh, almost every company can be uh, our customer, from large companies to technological startups. Uh, large companies just because they uh, provide, they manufacture a lot of details, and all the, these details should be measured in order to keep uh, the quality of the manufacturer. Uh, if you are talking about technological startups, it is also necessary uh, for them if uh, they are providing some physical solutions which are also needed to be measured. And as you can see from the graph, uh, market of uh, automatic solutions uh, is uh, rapidly growing. Uh, it is expected to grow in 24% until 2024. And uh, it is also said that uh, many uh, key players are being involved in this market and um, a lot of uh, money is being invested in process automation because it becomes more available and more effective for all uh, companies. Uh, what about next uh, goals? Uh, we hope to build uh, our project uh, fully uh, automated. Uh, in order to not involve all, um, manual work almost at all. Uh, for example, uh, some employee will be able to place uh, a detail in the center of our project. Uh, it will be able to export, import uh, some cut file or another file and our camera and our project will automatically measure all the details, all the dimensions and uh, will uh, just check for possible errors with existing file. So I think that's all I wanted to tell you about our project. Uh, time for questions, if you have any. It's worth mentioning that the prototype that is over there is uh, just a small sample of the one that can, can be industrialized and can be actually applied in manufacturing facilities in very different industries. Mainly metalworking and mechanical. It's time to invite, invite the next team, the Metroball. Where are you guys? Oh, here. Uh, uh, so that you don't... Time for a photo. Yeah. Now there will be two teams that are not students even yet. They come from school. Uh, these guys come from Valmier. Uh, I don't know which school in Valmier, but you will tell. And the next team comes from Daugavpils, also just pupils. All right, uh, good luck. And uh, Okay, hello. Yeah, my name is Artis. We're a three-man team and we're studying in Valmiera at Valmiera State Gymnasium. About eight months ago, winter had just started. We, had, we could see streets being cleaned and sidewalks being cleaned. We could see two main ways. First was shoveling, which is quite old-fashioned and inefficient. Then the second way we could see streets being cleaned was with these tractors, which are quite new to Latvia. And these are big, they require train operators and they're really, really expensive. So either way you look at it, there are a lot of problems you could solve. So we decided to make something that was going to be electric and autonomous. We came up with a 
robot that could autonomously do work, precisely sweeping snow off sidewalks. And the way it would do that is through an AI, and it will be controlled using an app. After we had come up with our idea, we saw that there was this opportunity to apply to the innovation project called Idea Hub. And we did. Who, who could have guessed we got accepted? Firstly, I want to talk more about this artificial intelligence we're using. First, data gets recorded. Right now, it would be through a remote, especially the first set of data. Then it gets sent to an external computer for usage and training. After the AI is trained, it gets sent back to the platform. Then the AI gathers the data that is that when it's running, and it's repeated from the start. The way we would actually be training the AI is through neat and algorithms. We have uh, a set of graphs here which uh, show how this is done. So the top left graph shows how the generations pass and how the AI gets more evolved. The more it is towards the right, the more evolved the AI is. And how these generations get chosen is through fitness. So that's the bottom, bottom left graph. And the most fit species in a generation get chosen for the next step. And the right graph shows how the AI inputs data, it goes through neurons, and then it reaches the desired outcome. Now you might ask, who would be even interested in this kind of product? Well, firstly, we'd like to do deals with uh, municipalities, with businesses that help municipalities, so they're the ones that are sweeping the streets, and directly with businesses. First off, we'd like to start with businesses, so we can build trust and prove that our product is efficient, and there is a use case for it. For example, sweeping parking lots in Oregon or Acropole. Now, later on, we would like to deal business with governments, right? And this is the way it's done currently. This is an example of till the street in Riga. Most of it is done privately, so the people that own the land actually have to clean the sidewalks. Some of it's done by the government, and the rest by the local municipality. Now, you might ask, why is it done like this? Well, there are a total of 1,500 kilometers of sidewalks in Riga that are next to roads. That's an uh, impressive number, and 2.8 million. That's how much it costs to sweep old Riga in a season. 12 million is an insane amount of money that is just burnt sweeping. But that's actually also wrong, because it's actually 24 million, and you have to pay 24 million to sweep all the street, the sidewalks in Riga for, in just one season. So, okay, there's a lot of money involved in it. Now imagine the amount of money it would cost in a city this three times the size and a, a six time and has six times the population. For example, Berlin. Now, why would you choose us? Because comparatively to the first two methods, so shovel, we're eco-friendly and we're sustainable. Now, there are competitors in the field like Dustclean, Trombia, and Endway. Comparatively to them, we would be an easier to use product, it would be cheaper, and it will be, we would be asking them to pay us for it per sweep that we're doing. Because manufacturing and selling our robot costs a lot. You have to set up the manufacturing process, and we do not have the funding for that. So rather, we would have a small set of quality robots that we would focus on maintaining. Now I want to explain our product shortly. This is the app we're going to be using. It's just a sketch right now. If you ever use the Bolt app, you can imagine that instead of Bolt icons, there are robot icons. And you can see each robot's status, what they're doing right now, their battery, and their GPS location. And this is how you choose which streets get swept by which robot. So it's the management platform. Now, this is the robot, it's nothing impressive. You can see it over there, and while well, testing, it broke, and we couldn't repair it in such a short time. So for now, we have this uh, short video. Now, these are specific components, tracks, gearboxes, batteries, chassis, and uh, the motor assembly. Uh, later on, we're planning on adding a snow shovel, of course, to be able to shovel snow, and a dispenser of salt or sand, so the uh, grip is still kept after the snow is plowed. Now, let's estimate revenue. So, we could manage 50 robots, that's a manageable fleet, and if we're asking for 90 euros per sweep, 
which would make us profitable, and we're doing the average amount of sweeps that are done per year, which is 50, then we'd be looking at a quarter of a million dollars. But remember, this is just for Riga. Now imagine what you could do if you're doing this across 10 cities, five times the size. And remember, this is just 1% of the 24 million it costs to do it in Riga. So it's 10 times as cheaper. Now, I want to talk about the team. First, I want to thank, thank our mentor, Dmitry Pavluk, for assisting us with the AI. Now, Nils is an AI developer, and he can personally say that he's helped us a lot. Now, our team leader is Harry, and he does most of the engineering and design work. I do some engineering, I do marketing, and I do market research and general research. What we need are mentors, because great ideas don't just appear. They're made. We need people with experience in the field because expertise is required for growth and understanding. And of course, a three-man team can't have everything you need, every skill you need, to possibly make a great product. So we're always looking to expand. We want to thank DSI for this opportunity, and we are going to apply to this grant again. But before we do that, we want to expand our viewpoints, look at what we've done, what we could have done, and what we could have changed to make it better. Thank you. Time for questions. I certainly hope that you can apply for the next round because if you first apply for a small, small project, so you're going for six months and implementing that project like this team did, for example, later you can apply for a larger project. So in total, you can be in the idea hub and receive Okay, that was our idea. So there is the question, will this small robot will be able to move that snow? And when you are moving snow to the sideways, there is also always building the hill on the sideways. So will the robot be able to do it? But anyway, the idea is really very interesting. Yeah, okay, to just answer that question, uh, we, would be the, we would be doing uh, experiments and it's about the shape of the shovel in front, so it could actually move to the side. And then you need a smaller robot if you're designing the actual shovel in front properly. Start if you are ready. Yeah, yeah. we are. Yeah. Do you want to use this microphone? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Hello. We are my company teams. Our slogan is "Easy solution for complicated problems," and this is our core. And today we are going to tell you about us. Meet our team. My name is Nikita. I can always uh, help with making any document, but my main role is to test and find what error. I'm Renat. I can use some programming languages and I'm good at working with databases. Well, I'm really good at testing and my main task is search errors. I'm Azar. I have experience in web design. My work in the team is to create designs, presentations, and make a chatbot attractive. Uh, my name is Oleg. I have experience in that platform, especially in C-sharp programming language, JavaScript, and experience in creating and managing databases. Also, I am responsible for the most important part of our project, its functionality. I'm Nikolai, I'm project manager, and my responsibility is communication with clients. Also, I I delegate upcoming tasks to the team and I set deadlines. Our main idea is to help transportation companies to improve communication with customers. And now let's see how we plan to do it. So there is a competition among chatbots in Latvia, but they all are different in functionality. And our chatbot is set up to help uh, especially transportation companies to improve their communication with clients. So let's see what are the problems in the market and how we plan to solve them. So the first problem is that there is no personal help. Uh, people need extra help with their trips. So our solution is that bot will be just trained 
and program it so it can answer many, 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 many other important questions about the topic. Next problem is that sometimes you should spend plenty of time to find a ticket uh, on the internet. Our database contains our Latvian stops and many, <coughs> many international roads, which means uh, that uh, our boat uh, can uh, <coughs> offer any ticket you need. Yeah. Uh, another problem is that people can't work day and night, and operators have to be paid extra for each working hour. But our boat solves this problem easily, it works 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and doesn't get tired, which makes it possible to reduce costs. Uh, many tourists also want to buy transportation tickets in Latvia, but they lack resources in their own or English language. And there is a solution. Our chatbot will be programmed into the most popular languages of the world, as well as the languages of Latvia's neighbor countries which will help tourists and reduce the cost of operators who know these languages. As you can see, in the recent years the chatbot market is growing and is particularly, particularly growing. This means that countries and companies are becoming more and more technological and this can be avoided. We are proud at the moment we can help Riga International Bus Terminal by making their chatbot. So, our future uh, our future plan is as follows. Uh, firstly, firstly, we plan to release the chatbot on the website to the general public and monitor user reactions and the market. Secondly, fi to fix bugs and add needed features. Uh, next, we plan to try to develop the idea and create a startup. And finally, to cooperate with other transportation companies. So, although we are just ordinary school students from Daugavpils, our idea is quite original because we make bots specially for transportation companies and we do lots of analysis of the needs for companies and users and we can customize bots for a particular company. So, our solution is fast, cheap and can be uh, quickly adjusted for a particular company. And now on the screen you can see how you can use the chatbot. It seems easy, but in fact the bot uh, uses many databases and learns from its own errors every day. Let's watch our video. how you can use our chatbot. By the way, we are filming this video, we bought tickets to Riga. Yeah, it seems simple, but as uh, Renat says, uh, bot uses many, many databases, and that's not easy. So, uh, we want to say thank you to Yuris Papoulis. He is not with us today, but uh, he is our mentor, and he is head of IT and logistics in Riga International Bus Terminal. And uh, yeah, just today we released uh, our chatbot on their main website to make first big test. So by scanning this QR code, you can uh, use our bot on your own devices. So thank you for your attention. Any questions? So that's com that's that's true. What the, what they said the. Yesterday there was no chat box for Riga bus terminal and there is today and it's working, it's customized, it's not just random chat bot, it's customized and, and these are just guys uh, uh, that uh, came to us in a first call, they were rejected but they keep coming back and in the second round they were accepted and I look forward to seeing you also for the 
big project uh, for the third call, October 10th. Questions? Remark. Remark. Comment, remark. Comment, remark. Please come to Riga Satis, man. <laughs> All right, uh, pictures. Guys just made the t shirts for this event. Uh, yeah, sorry. I should mention, uh, yeah, bot is still a like, better version and maybe some mistakes, but it works, really works. We really bought tickets here and uh, back to Dalgov Pills. Yeah, here you are. Thank you. All right, it's innovations is not about perfection, but it's about doing and actually trying to create something useful. Next team, the program, please come on stage. Uh, another project with prototype on the uh, closer to the wall. And uh, please find your presentation. And uh, this is the final presentation for today. without TTI, EDA Hub, uh, European Union and National Development Bank. So, first of all, let's meet our team. So, on the team, the contact manager, that is Victoria Gertzeva, he, he, she is from that uh, Valmia. Also, we have system engineer and designer Ivan Skertsos. He is TCI student from Riga. Our supervisor is Vladimir Spetros, and he is a specialist from aviation area. Problem. Nowadays, huge number of devices appear very fastly. Even if mobile devices still work, they can... In the market, to produce the new model of the drones, uh, this uh, <coughs> necessary to use uh, semiconductor chips. Uh, over the crisis, uh, <coughs> every new chips uh, cost higher than the previous. Also, around the existing model of drones, to make the special jobs, these drones have uh, high prices uh, and it makes it difficult for small companies. Uh, also, uh, nowadays, 5D technology grows very fast, but uh, drone manufacturers no time to to keep up with this technology. So, and let's first of all see how this typical, typical drone works. So, as you can see, <clears throat> I need to do a lot of work to start my mission, like fly the drone. So, in the beginning, I work with the map, I match the points and receive the data to the drone and go to the field to start my mission. It takes a lot of time. So then I pick up the drone, I check if it's, everything is correct, I start my mission, and when my mission was finished, I go back to my home and receive the data from the drone. I take my card receive the data to my laptop, computer, I need a lot of time to receive the data and start to work. Yes.
So, I think everyone in this class have the this device, right? So this device also have camera, screen, processor, and sensors. Why not? We have we can't use this as a drone core. As you can understand. Uh, now shortly we introduce your technology and product overview. So, in this uh, project we are taking a mobile phone as the core of the drone platform. Uh, uh, drone, drone platform we are constructing from uh, accessible materials uh, like uh, 3D printing and foams. It is uh, necessary to produce drone very fast and also make, uh, make more uh, available for simplest user. From the beginning of our project, we have the idea to build a drone that is similar to airplane. This makes it very easy to control and in some cases the mission time is increased by using only a single motor as opposed to quadcopters. So, the way how we realized the platform was show the real possibility of an implementation uh, of uh, this innovative type of a drone platform. And the second, it just launches drone platform and completes the task. The project main result is to develop and show the prototype of drone, also to show the real possibility using the platform that mobile device can be used uh, like a flight controller. So, but create the device is only the one part. The second part, how we monetize the idea. So our team uh, has come up with uh, two business models. First of all, first of all, the simplest one, just uh, saving the uh, drone platforms to the clients for personal use, or we can use B2B model and share idea with communication companies. Talking about the B2C model, where we is the way when we only sell the platform and the technology to the users and users use their own devices. So first one you need to buy the product, download the app and the flight area can be matched in the app uh, and then you launch the drone let Don do his work and finish the process and receive the data talking about the b2b model when we work with businesses telecommunications orders quickly and flexibly then something needs to be implemented very quickly or very important at the expense of simplicity it is very easy to do. Telecommunication companies can provide delegated drones or delegated cloud technology in conjunction with the platform. So the use of the service for shoppers can be expressed by a few simple things. Form, form a package subscription, subscription of a service, contact for a selected period, get from the service center, use it, that make a payment. Uh, the main project is very, very relevant, uh, as we can see from the statistics. Uh, drone market uh, increase every year and also increase the number of uh, used of, of used phones. Most of the companies provide only cloud services for specific tasks. It became available for small companies and users. So, future plans. It was a long way to start and prototype demonstration for us. So our results and our future plans is and even will show us. So even will show you the our prototype. It is drone that looks like airplane. So you can see 
he can put the phone, and the phone uh, works like a control, and the sensors that is in phone manages and control the wing position for the airplane. That's how it works. Thank you for your attention in, and you can follow us on Instagram. Thank you, good presentation. Any questions? All right, if no questions to the team, then you are requested to take a photo and uh, I know that outside there is already uh, prepared some food and snacks some drinks uh, so I will not take all of your time but I should explain you a little bit more how to apply for next for the next uh, call. So, meanwhile, I'm opening my presentation. Do you have uh, any general comments, remarks, announcements? Um, um, usually, we are uh, we are uh, building teams in two ways. One is that. Uh, your team members, they are your classmates or just from your school, people you know. The other way is that you are just standing up right now and telling to others, I am looking for team. If anyone is interested for mechanical engineer or IT person or from, uh, from uh, economics, uh, I would like to be uh, a part. Uh, of a uh, team that will uh, eventually apply for Idea Hub. So if there is something like that, uh, this is a free space to do it. I know that there was a girl named Veronica who had... Y you wanted to say something? Yeah. Um, now, just hold on, I will bring you a microphone. <coughs> and uh, this is our lovely team and uh, for now we are working on a startup uh, that is called uh, PP PTT uh, which means uh, public transport tracking and um, our main goal is to create an extension that allows you to track public transport uh, and uh, you know it's a problem when you come to a bus stop and uh, you wait for 5 minutes, for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes and uh, you just don't know where is your bus, uh, uh, just uh, he's late or the driver is smoking somewhere or just what is, good, what is happening. Uh, so we want to solve this uh, problem by creating um, an extension. Um, first of all we want to work with uh, Riga Statixme and uh, to create an extension for them. Um, then we want to go further and uh, maybe spread uh, over the Europe. And um, then maybe we can spread uh, even uh, all over the world. But this is like <laughs> the last two are my bad dreams, but who knows? <laughs> um, and uh, yes, so for now you can have one question. What is the purpose of my speech? Uh, yes, guys, so we need uh, a logist. <laughs> so please, uh, if you're interested and if you're a motivated person and you want to learn your skills and you want to practice and you want to uh, become a maybe businessman in the future, 
Uh, so please raise your hand. Uh, guys from uh, Logist who are interested? Logistics, anyone, please? <laughs> <laughs> Probably someone online sitting in the chair or in sofa is hanging a uh, hand, but uh, uh, we can arrange somehow that uh, I will spread the information for you electronically and if there is uh, uh, maybe also uh, Irina Ptitsina will help to, to reach uh, students from logistics uh, who could join your team that will potentially apply for a DFR uh, next round. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the nation, so <laughs> thank you. Right. So, to, to, to this team that is just starting to creating and to others, here is what you have to do if you want to apply for next round. Uh, so you have idea or uh, interest to participate and then uh, we usually organize seminars but this is also some sort of seminar where you get that information uh, how to proceed. Normally, I would advise to have individual consultations with me or uh, my colleagues, Vladimir, Dirts, uh, Mikhails, and we would guide you through that process. Uh, if you want, you can also read regulations. That is rather formal document, but it is uh, uh, approved for every application round. Uh, in our website, ideahub.lv, uh, you can find application form and uh, that is the major document you have to fill. Uh, it is a little big bureaucracy, but the least that we could do. Uh, so uh, there is two or three major things that you have to do. You have to find your team, and that's what I said, whether you already have people you want to uh, work with, or you will look, that's up to you. Uh, normally we would expect uh, two to five people uh, size of the team. If you cannot find team, come to me, tell me that you are looking for another uh, people at your team and we will, uh, we will find team. Or you don't have idea, but you wanna do some uh, project and wanna be in real startup. Uh, also, just let us know, we will, uh, help to create a team. The other thing is you have to find supervisor and that's formal requirement in application form as well. Supervisors, uh, list of supervisors is in the uh, website I mentioned, ideahub.lv, but also if you will come to me we will suggest some uh, good supervisors for you. And then there is this application form. And that is very important to start working on application form not on the October 9th day before application deadline, but I would say some uh, good two weeks uh, in advance because it's, uh, it is a little bit demanding and there is several people of jury who actually check the application forms, like uh, is great aunts, one of the toughest jury members, he will not uh, let you go through with weak application form or uh, Thomas Greenfelds, uh, director of uh, Mechanica Mechanical Engineering and Metalworking Association, right? Just, just an example. So the application form should be in proper quality. Um, then uh, there is also, depending on whether it's small or bigger project, you have to also provide some calculations how you will spend those two and a half or 11,000 euros. And once you have all those documents, uh, including CVs, cost justification application form, you uh, send it uh, to Idea Hub website, and then uh, the jury uh, start evaluating your projects, and normally within a week or two weeks, you get a reply from me, normally. And uh, then if you are accepted, we sign agreement, and it's on, uh, half a year hard work and uh, maybe uh, ready startup for, uh, for uh, whatever, 
maybe just learning, maybe earning, learning, earning. Um, now, that, that's the process. Uh, application form approximately, uh, it's not full, so that it just fits in one slide, but uh, there is need to describe your idea as brief as possible, like in a Twitter format, but then also expand it. Uh, we always ask for innovation potential and target markets so, so that you, in advance, you have done some research. Um, so that you have um, looked in the market what are the competitors of your idea. Uh, and then uh, basically how you gonna do it, what will be your activities until you are ready like these guys, these seven teams uh, to present and to explain to audience, to companies, to investors uh, how you get just from idea to already ready prototype that can be at some point brought to the market whether service or product that's basically it guys, that's, that's it uh, uh, and uh, again if you have uh, questions and if you want to apply you definitely must uh, there is you can you basically it's, don't wait till the last uh, minute in advance you have to start working in the, looking at documents and contact us just let me know uh, call me send me whatsapp message send me email doesn't matter how but you we have to meet before that online or in person and uh, be ready for the application because the jury is really tough. We, we try to to ease them so that more projects go through, but uh, the quality is also very important for us. All right, uh, basically this is it for the event. Thank you for your attention. I hope it was useful for all of you. And, uh, Final remarks, if anyone is interested to see laboratories or other infrastructure that TSI offers, let me know or Gert, uh, we will uh, create a group and uh, we'll, we'll do that. Otherwise, enjoy food and drinks. Cheers. Ja, det är bra. 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 Det är bra.